G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. Today we're working on the top of our stabiliser arms. This is the assembly that we need to guide the arm up and down the slider and also bolt it to the deck when the wings are fully deployed. I nipped over and checked the mail earlier. This arrived. I don't know who sent it, there was no information on the um, package as to who it came from but whoever you were that sent this little four pound hammer it's going to be an absolute doozy on the boat and I really appreciate it, thank you. This is the top of one of the arms of the two M30 bolts that go through into the stainless threaded plate that's the 2205 high tensile stainless now that gets the stainless gets welded to the deck and the plate gets welded to the top of the arm so this is on the uh, port side which hasn't been welded on yet let me show you what it's like on the starboard side that has. So that's the finished sort of article, what it looks like when we're done. Basically welded stainless onto the mild steel doubler and then we've got the two bolts. In this case we've got a stud and a bolt but it'll be two bolts that hold it down. Now Trev's going to work on getting the, um, the little alignment pins organised today so that we can get this arm up and down on the inside of the sliders like they, they should be. At this point we've only ever pushed them up and down on the outside with a bit of a temporary setup. So Trev's working on getting that side of the alignment pin sorted. I'll show you what we need to do with the mag drill that was donated so that we can get the bolts going perfectly through the holes that we drilled and get that alignment organised. This is the mag drill that was donated by Mark Schlakier. It's an absolute beast of a tool. So what we need to do is use this today. We've got a 34 millimetre cutter on it. So that there um, is an annular cutter. It's a bit like a hole saw but way more robust than a hole saw. It's, um, the chuck in these is quite thick and there's not a lot of um, uh, I suppose variability in the um, dimensional stability. That sounds very complex. It's simpler than that. It doesn't move. So when you're drilling it, you can get a lot of accuracy. The reason why we need to use the mag drill, so if you look down this hole here, it's a 32 mil hole that's uh, cut out with a drill, and then you've got an M30 thread. So theoretically, you've got a millimeter of clearance either side of that thread. However, in practice it doesn't generally work out like that. So when you weld this to the deck and everything does its little movements and whatever, settles down, it never really lines up perfect and the, the uh, bolts are a wee bit difficult to get in and out. So what we're gonna do is weld the stainless washers. So we've got 316 washers. We're gonna weld those around here. So just like we did on the other one, they sit like so, get welded on like that. And then we plunge the 34 mil cutter right through that top plate hole so we do end up with about two mil clearance either side of the bolt. Um, and because we've got the alignment pins that Trev's gonna be working on, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the alignment in any way of the arm. And once you crank these down nice and tight, they're not gonna move. With everything on these stabilizers, there's always compromises. Here we're trying to figure out what we need to do in terms of how high do we build the pins, how far back do we put them from the side of the boat so that the arm doesn't bind up above the roof. So while Trev goes down and um, cuts out those steel cheeks, we're going to make them out of 20mm steel. We're going to drill a 32mm hole through it, push our 32mm uh, stainless um, solid bar through. That's going to become the locating pin. We'll weld those 20mm cheeks onto the side of the top plate. Um, yeah, they're going to be pretty solid, pretty strong. He's going to get that sorted. While he's doing that, I'm going to go around the other side of the boat. This is the top of our second arm. I need to clean off the doubler, get rid of that surface rust and get it ready to weld. I'm going to put the top plate onto this arm. You can see we've got a bit of tape on there just so that we can stop uh, any rubbish going down inside those tubes while we're not working on it. We'll rip all of that off and we'll get the top plate on there and then we can start making the same mountings um, on this side and we'll get the mag drill out and we'll drill this side as well. There is a strong chance I'm going to get rained on in two minutes. I feel like a NASA countdown is appropriate. Like, instead of T minus something, it has to be R minus, rain minus 30. Yeah, the rain's gonna slaughter us soon. So my plan is to um, put everything inside, stick me slightly outside, and then just weld in it anyway. Gas bottle's going internal in the lounge. I've set the welder up, and then this is now a welding um, rain escape hatch. It's not a cat door, it's absolutely to do with welding. Slight revision to the plan. I'm gonna go and assemble the um, second wing top plate. We're gonna make the little cheeks and do all of the bits and pieces, weld that all together before we stick it onto the wing. Um, because of what we've learnt on doing the first wing, we're pretty sure that we can assemble the whole thing and then just basically weld it straight onto the arm and save a lot of time on that second wing. So we wanna bring the second wing up. It hasn't had any work done to it for a while. We've been concentrating on one to learn what we need to do. So yeah, 
we're gonna make a slight adjustment as to what we were gonna do, and that'll help us save a bit of time in the long run. I'm in my zone, can't fail. Got my mindset on grade, like I am home, no doubt. Time to raise it too loud. I'm gonna light up the sky. Gonna play it strong. Right, we'll give those a clean up. They're all tigged on nicely now, so we'll go through and start building these side plates. I'm thinking based on the performance of this. We should probably retire the little battery drill for 35 millimeter stainless drilling. <laughs> uh, right. The drill press. Big blue. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely getting some more bits for this. This thing's amazing. How good is that, Darian? Measured in seconds. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Happy day. The quota of swearing versus hole quantity is going to significantly alter after this. That's amazing. That's the finish you're left with. So that's cutting stainless and mild steel. Went through it like butter. So we got the holes buzzed in that. We got the stainless on the top so that it's not going to cause rust all the time when we're um, bolting them down. Trev over the back is making our little brackets. These are going to be the, I don't know what you call them, maybe shoulder, they're going to go on either side of, of that piece of steel there and they're going to hold our 32mm pin. Rain's definitely here. Rather than experiment with our stainless stock, we've got a couple of bits of mild steel that's the same diameter and just cut them different lengths. What we're going to do is use these as test pieces to figure out how we want to make this specifically so we're wondering do we leave them a little bit short and then push them inside the 32mm cheek and weld the cheek so that there's no, nothing sticking outside that cheek or do we push it past the cheek slightly and weld on the outside. That'll make sense in a second when we show you the cheek design. In case you're wondering why we're not using the mag drill to drill what Trev's got behind me there, it's a 32mm hole that we're drilling in the drill press. We don't have a 32mm annular cutter. They're bloody expensive locally. Um, we bought a 34mm cutter for, the, uh, for those holes you just saw me drill. That was 127 bucks for that one cutter. Um, it was an eye-watering price. Fabulous cutter, like, man, amazing. Absolutely amazing, but my God, that was expensive. Um, on eBay, I found a set, I think it was a set of four for 125 bucks. Um, so, you know, various different sizes than that. So I'm gonna buy that. I just haven't got around to getting it yet. Um, that would have been lovely because there's a 32 mil cutter in that. We could have buzzed the um, mag drill through the, the steel. But for now, we're having to use the drill press because we don't have the cutters so this is the option that we were looking at, so short or long pin. So a long pin would be sitting like that in the cheek and we'd weld it on, on this side and on, on that side there. And then the stubby option is something like that and we basically just tig, tig around this side here and then on this side here, I'm not good enough to tig the other side, so I'll mig the outside and I'll tig the inside. Um, and that will give us uh, basically nothing in the way on this side, which is gonna be the side for the, um, the top hat on the arm. Right, so it's definitely the, probably the small options the easiest to do, isn't it? Yeah. And we've got, what have we got inside there, about six mil, seven mil on yeah. the inside? Yeah, yeah, easy. Maybe even 10. Yeah, and there's still plenty in there, isn't there? Oh, heaps, there's, that's not, there's no way that's ever gonna come out. Yeah. So the stubby 70 mil pin is the option that we're gonna go with, these little wee ones like that. So I'll make four of those, Trev's gonna get the 32 mil holes drilled in the last three of those plates 
um, and then we can start tigging these in and start assembling them. I want to take a minute to thank um, some people that have come on board this week. We've had some new Patreons join our team. Um, it's an amazing experience being able to build Brewpeg and have you guys support us. And what we do on this channel and on this boat is only possible because of our Patreons and our PayPal supporters. So if you've ever considered supporting the project, please, we'd love to have you on board. It makes the world of difference at our end. And a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming up. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I'd die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it